Yeah. You know, I remember still to this day when I was young learning the guitar, playing chords, Beatles songs, discovering Jimi Hendrix songs, that one day my brother came to me and showed me this record. And he was like, Hendrix is okay, but listen to this guy. This guy can really play. And boy, was he right. Steve Ray Vaughan indeed can play. Fast forward 30 years later on, I'm still amazed by the guitar work of this blues legend. So what we're gonna do in this video today is I'm gonna show you 10 tricks that Steve Ray Vaughan used to do all the time that you can steal and add to your own repertoire. <laughs> Let's get started. One of the things that Steve Ravon used to do all the time was to slide high on the fretboard on the G string extremely fast to very low on the fretboard. Like this. Now by itself, this is nothing, right? But in a solo, Steve would do something like The thing which makes it characteristic is that you do it when least expected, all of a sudden, out of the blue. And one of Stevie's heroes was a guitarist named Lightning Hopkins, famous, fantastic blues guitarist. And he used to do something like this. He played without a pick and he did something like... And Stevie took that idea and made it his own. Now Stevie, of course, does use the pick. And it's the basic, simple thing, really. Two fingers. And you get this famous standard blue sound, really. But the key thing is to pick those strings, those three top strings upwards, loud and nasty. As loud and nasty as you can. And then you slide on back. Pull off back to the root note. So here it is. That's it. In the blues, Stevie would play it like. Such a great little trick. Now one of the many great things about Stevie's playing is to me his vibrato. The man had the most Perfect, sublime vibrato. Immediately recognize it's him. And if you want it to sound like Stevie, here's what you gotta do. For the two top strings, the vibrato is achieved by pushing, bending the strings upwards toward yourself. Upwards. And all the other strings, you get the vibrato by moving away from yourself, downwards. And many other guitarists, like Jimi Hendrix, also had a fantastic vibrato. But where Hendrix would do something like this, Steve Ray Vaughan would do the vibrato with not just one string, but two strings, which would make... And you notice my face immediately does that. And that's not for show or anything. That's because it actually hurts to do that. You grab a guitar and try to do this, a vibrato on the G and B string. You're gonna find yourself doing this. Eh? It's unavoidable. I mean, Steve Ray Vaughan playing his music and his style of guitar playing, it's gonna hurt. And this guy played strings so thick and heavy you could tow a car with them, so. You're gonna create some calluses, most definitely. On number seven, we have what I call the washing machine, which is this. When playing a shovel, most guitarists play it like this. A shovel meaning that rhythm that goes like uh, one and two and three and four, typical blues rhythm. But Stevie, 
would create that rhythm by making this circular motion. Which automatically creates that shovel rhythm. Oh, and, 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 and. and because it feels different, it automatically sounds different as well. Eh? The most famous example that I just played, Pride and Joy. There are many others. washing machine. Now another guitarist that Stevie was influenced by for sure was B.B. King and the great B.B. King and he would sometimes start a blues song playing this. Especially that last note. Woo <laughs> Can't even sing it. That's typical B.B. King. Now Stevie took that note, that technique, and he made it his own. Now if it was the ring finger it would have been easier. But unfortunately, it's just the index finger. And again, you can look at my face. This sort of hurts doing this. Great technique. And Stevie would play licks like... And that's one good note to steal and add to your own repertoire. And when Stevie played a guitar solo, it was almost always incredibly interesting and exciting. Now, one of the things he did in order to avo avoid things becoming dull and stale was to do this. Let's say he was playing a solo, huh? Eh? And then all of a sudden, he would switch to... octaves, which is something he learned from listening to Wes Montgomery. Isn't that amazing? When you hear Stevie play, you have all these influences in there. It's a bit of Albert King, a bit of Jimi Hendrix, a bit of Wes Montgomery, a bit of B.B. King. It's all in there. But eventually it sounds like Stevie Ray Vaughan. That's amazing. So a good trick to learn here is to steal is whenever you do a solo, mix it up. Go from regular picking. to playing those octaves. Mix it up. Now, probably the most influential guitarist on Stevie's playing was a man called Albert King. And Albert King would play a lick like... It's a typical Albert King lick, which, of course, Stevie would also use. But what Stevie would do is, instead of playing this one note crystal clear, this bend here, he would also intentionally bend the B string and play that along with it. Which in itself creates a very nasty and awkward note, right? Or tone. But in the blues, that's exactly what we want. And Stevie would really milk it like this. Much more raunchy. That's a great technique to learn. Now a good trick that many guitarists know is to slide a note up, one fret, and then immediately back, like this. When you use it playing a lick, it sounds a bit jazzy. For example. But Stevie played that slide incredibly fast, like this. That's very Stevie-like. And not just once, but a couple of times. You just play that slow, so you can notice how often he uses that slide. Like three or four times it's in there. And not just on the G string, but you can also do it on the top string. In Tim Pennelly, for example, he does that little trick over and over again even, like this. Great little trick to learn and steal. Now this here is one of my favorite little tricks. Let's say you're playing a guitar solo eh, in this little box that Stevie used to do very often. 
and you want to move back to the standard blue scale, a bit lower on the fretboard. You can do that just by randomly going over there, but Stevie had this little smooth transition he would very often play in between. He would do slow, this. Just those couple of notes. So that would allow him from going from here to go back to the standard blues minor pentatonic scale in a very smooth manner. Huh? Great little trick. And on number one, we have a guitar trick that Stevie learn from listening to Buddy Guy. Now, when you have a lick like this, that's pretty good. But what you can also do is bar that index finger and hybrid pick the top string with your middle finger. Then that same lick becomes this. And Stevie used to do that all the time. Such a cool little trick. Remember, don't just do it once, but keep milking that blue note. That slide back and everything. And there you have it. Those were my top 10 tricks you can steal and learn from Stevie Ray Vaughan. Now, let's end with a guitar solo. I'm gonna improvise a solo in the style of Steve Ray Vaughan, and I'm gonna play some of those tricks, see if you can spot them when I play them. And of course, the backing track is available for all patrons, as always. Here we go.